Um, well, you have the, uh, the, the, the pleasure or the displeasure, whichever way it is, for having me um, staying with you to moderate the next session. Unfortunately, our, our colleague Stephen Spratt, who was supposed to be here, is, is quite ill today. Um, but I think, um, for me, it's great because I, it gives me the opportunity to sort of make the link um, from, yeah, next thing, from um, the... Shankar's presentation, but I think also the, the, the questions and, and the, the comments that, that came up to the presentation that John will be making, which really kind of sets out, um, I think, IDS's approach or, or where we sort of see things at the moment. And some of the issues around the, the withdrawal of the state and the gap that that, that creates, and, and can markets fill those gaps, or where are the limits of what markets can do? Um, some of the question about drivers and, and what are the drivers and how do you create alignment around some of these issues? And then I think the question as well, uh, right at the very back there, um, is one that we're grappling with and or I, I think pointing to as well, this question of there seems to be so much um, uh, requests and interest and, and energy directed towards business as a potential contributor towards development, but how how do you figure out what's effective? What's what are the priorities? I mean, what what is the the, the most the best way forward? I suppose um, is sort of where we're at. So, John, I, I uh, will turn over to you to to share some of IDS's reflections. Thank you. Well, good afternoon again, everybody. Um, it's a rather difficult act to follow, but um, I'll do my best. And, uh, and I think uh, Jody is correct to say that there's quite a lot of overlap between some of the issues that emerged in Shankar Venkateswaran's um, session and the things, the thoughts that we've been having uh, within the business and uh, development uh, centre at IDS. And, and the first thing to note is, of course, that business and development is uh, highly fashionable at the moment. Uh, there's quite a lot of activity and excitement around thinking about how businesses might contribute to development and mobilising uh, business resources. Um, Justin Greening, for example, just uh, a couple of weeks ago was at the London Stock Exchange uh, talking about focusing on business and seeing business as the driver of economic development, which would be the driver of progress on achievement of the multiple development objectives. Um, at Davos um, earlier this year, um, the UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, um, cited the forthcoming uh, UN Climate Change Summit in September as an opportunity for businesses to quote show what they can what they can do uh, and to work with governments at the highest level to address climate change so again a big global issue um, the subject you know of, of central interest to development agencies and governments around the world and the president uh, the secretary general of the UN is emphasizing that business has got a chance to step up and show uh, what it can do. And in fact, there's a plethora of initiatives um, uh, by development agencies that seek to engage business in a, um, addressing an equally broad range of uh, development objectives, from hunger to climate change to the green economy uh, to health and, and many other areas, as well as the, the, the core uh, question of economic development and economic growth. And it's also worth noting that the kind of businesses that development actors appeal to when they're thinking about business and development initiatives are also extremely diverse. So sometimes it's informal sector, sometimes it's large multinational companies, sometimes it's um, small-scale finance, sometimes it's domestic companies. The business itself is a category that includes, can be very, very broad. And if one, one can uh, you know, draw this category in different ways. Um, and I think also, as, uh, as has come up already in the first session, we have increasingly the issue of businesses from the OECD countries and businesses from the BRICS and businesses from other rising powers around the world. That the business, what is a business, and which businesses might be key actors in development, itself, itself is changing uh, very rapidly. Um, I think also 
although I've talked about businesses and um, uh, sorry, development, what development wants from business, we also see, and I think again it was reflected in uh, Shankar's um, uh, presentation, that the action is not all on the side of development agencies. Businesses too are making commitments to, uh, to principles of conduct, uh, to collaborating with development actors, to being aware of the development impact and the development potential of all the many activities that they do as part of their core business. And so we have not only development with expectations about business, we have businesses sometimes under external pressure, but also, as again, as Shankar was saying, under internal, uh, internal pressure or internal drivers thinking about uh, more, perhaps more than in the past about their development impact and their development responsibilities. So at one level that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? You know, lots, lots of business, lots of development, lots of interaction, lots of new thinking. The problem is, and again it's a problem that was flagged up in the previous session, is that so many different initiatives, so many different actors, that we get a lot of confusion. And this multiplicity of initiatives and this elasticity of what is business and what are the many development outcomes that business might be interested in, I think raises a really fundamental question. If there are so many initiatives, how do we work out the best way to use what are inevitably scarce resources in pursuing those initiatives? We can't do everything, so how do we choose? It's a fundamental question. And when I say scarce resources, yes, those scarce resources might be development resources, so it might be aid budgets, it might be uh, um, people, it might be implementation capacity, it might be NGO capacity. But I think equally, we also have to think about scarce business resources. Not only finance, but also human resources to pay attention to these development issues. And I think also business energy and business commitment. If you constantly asked to do new things, or doubts, are, or you're constantly asked to, um, that you're not quite doing enough, and could you do more, and could you do this, and could you do that, then there is a real danger of exhaustion and a certain disillusionment with the, the fact that the, there seems to be a never-ending pressure, you can never do enough. And I think, therefore, we have to seriously consider the issue of how we focus our um, priorities, how we focus our demands um, on... Uh, and, and build a relationship between business and development that makes the best use of those uh, scarce resources. We have currently then a situation where there's a long list of things that could be done. We generally think that it's better to do things than not to do things, and if we have a choice between doing more and doing less, we'll always do more. Well, we can't. And therefore, we are implicitly making choices. We're maybe undermining the long-term sustainability of these relationships. And therefore, we have, to, we have to establish priorities. And so I think one of the starting points for the Business and Development Centre at IDS is precisely this idea that we need a clearer agenda from the development side. What is it we want to achieve? What are the most important things to achieve? And also a better understanding of how and why businesses might be motivated to operate in ways that contribute to the achievement of development goals. You need to understand business much better in order to make smart demands and smart approaches and smart collaborations with business. Now, um, and so, we, what we hope to do when, uh, through um, creating the Business and Development Centre is to enable IDS uh, to engage with businesses uh, and with development agencies and to collaborate, be a, an organisation or a, a centre that is more able to collaborate effectively with the many partners in the field of business and development. And we see ourselves as, a, as part of the, that our role will be to be part of a network where our input can be uh, that we can learn from others and we can also use our, our outputs to contribute to broader debates and broader processes of uh, social change. And of course one of those partners is uh, Business Fights Poverty who are co-sponsoring the event uh, with us today and for which we're very grateful for uh, BFB for doing that. So it's all very well to say that uh, we want to achieve clearer focus. How do we do it?
Well, we've identified initially, as an initial statement of what we want to do, that there are three big challenges. The first challenge, again, has been referred to in the first session, is the issue of alignment. Where is there the strongest potential for business development collaborations to achieve effect? Um, business and development agencies and development actors more generally do have different constellations of interests. Uh, the, the challenge is twofold. Firstly, to work out where those interests are well aligned. But secondly, to, to think about how perceptions of interests uh, can be changed, um, either through, um, uh, through incentives, through changes in perceptions about long-term, short-term, the importance of sustainability, etc. But also, I think, through changes in norms and values, the internal drivers about what companies uh, believe that um, they should be doing and what, it, you know, what is their purpose. And so... Um, you know, we think there's a lot of uh, scope for understanding better alignment and work and thinking about how alignments can be formed and what are the ways in which we can bring uh, interests uh, more into alignment. Uh, but I think we also recognise that we also have we, that we have to identify where we shouldn't be trying to do this. Where there may be, there are situations where business and development interests are actually very poorly aligned, and the costs of bringing into, them into alignment could be exceedingly onerous. And in those situations, we have to uh, to say that this would not be a good area to seek a collaboration, um, and that there may be other areas where we can be much more effective and, and spend our resources, and that there are areas, for example, where governments or uh, NGOs or certain types of businesses like social businesses are better placed to be collaborators in the pursuit of um, development objectives. Yeah. The second issue that I want to talk about is effectiveness. Um, when I talk to businesses in developing countries and you say, what are the obstacles you face? You inevitably find a very long list. It's this, it's that, it's electricity, it's infrastructure, it's regulation, it's tariffs, it's... Well, you can't tackle them all at once. So we have to find a way of saying which are the obstacles which, if tackled, would give us the best, quickest, most cost-effective benefit. So that's the second challenge. We've got some ideas about how we might do that. The third challenge is to say that we have a lot of business initiatives. We have a lot of um, pilots. Um, uh, we have uh, interventions. But how do we get enduring development impact at scale? And that's partly a scaling up issue, and it's partly a, um, an issue around driving systemic change. So it's about seeing how we can use business and development collaborations to transform the environment in which business operates so that one intervention has benefits for a much wider range of firms. Right. So they're the, kind of, they're, they're the three priorities that we have in the short term for the work of the Business and Development Centre. Um, alignments, effectiveness and uh, deep, deep change or uh, increasing the, the impact. We think that these interests are better established at the um, sectoral level because the, the challenges that businesses face are uh, vary considerably across and within sectors. And so I just want to illustrate that by looking at two examples where we, how we might approach the issue of these, the, these issues at a sectoral level. The first is food and nutrition. Uh, we've been working on business food and nutrition now for two or three years, uh, particularly focusing on micronutrient deficiencies. Uh, we draw the following lessons. Firstly, there has been some real success. I think Gaines work, for example, on fortification and facilitating fortification of staple products has been really important in developing countries. But we also note that, firstly, a lot of initiatives around food and nutrition want to um, focus on producing more food, producing more nutritious food. But the development challenge is actually much more specific than that. The big development challenge around nutrition is what happens to children under the age of two, and that is obviously related to maternal health before, during, and uh, after um, um, pregnancy. 
We also note that food markets are very complex. And so uh, there are many ways in which people acquire food, and there are, and that they, most households, particularly for infant um, foods in the point of transition to solids, uh, rely on markets, and the informal sector is a big provider. So we need a strategy for the informal sector as well as the formal sector. And we know that these markets don't operate very, very well. And so uh, I don't have time to go into it, but we've got certain ideas about how we can deal with the market failures in the area of food and nutrition. And finally, I just want to say something about health. Um, traditionally, uh, development spending on health is focused on public health systems. But in many developing countries, poor people actually rely increasingly on informal sector providers. It's part of the with withdrawal of the state idea. Um, and this brings certain benefits. The spread of these markets means that most people can, can buy drugs, although there may be issues around counterfeits. But there are evidence that, that it, it, the informal sector and the, the market provision has been successful in reducing disease incidents, uh, reducing mortality, for example, in countries such as Bangladesh. But there are big problems with unregulated markets around counterfeits, partial doses of antibiotics, the supply of unnecessary drugs. So the big challenge uh, is to how do we tackle those problems? We know that governments are not very good at tackling those problems by, because they have limited regulatory capacity. So we ask the question, is there a role for pharmaceutical countries, uh, companies, social entrepreneurs and other types of companies working with governments and informal providers to improve the performance of these informal providers in meeting health needs? So we're thinking about how private companies and new technologies can actually radically improve the performance of the informal sector in partnership with formal sector actors. So, um, and, and uh, you know, IDS is working with various people around the world on that. I just want to mention that uh, some people from IDS will be going to uh, Rio next week uh, to talk about the Green Transformation. It's part of the BRICS Academic Forum, which is related to the, the, BRICS, uh, the BRICS meeting in, uh, in, in Brazil later this year. And so we're building up collaborations with developing countries, both the, the BRICS and, um, and uh, the, 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 the less developed countries, to explore precisely these types of issues. So to conclude, I, I would say that we're very excited about the opportunities for looking at business and development and what the Business and Development Centre can create. From the feedback we've had already from both development agencies and business, we think that the challenges we identify resonate with both business and practitioner audiences, and we want to engage and work with with others in the field, such as Business Fights Poverty, to take uh, this agenda forward. We also want to hear from you. Um, so we're going to ask you, we're going to have some table activity uh, in a few minutes, but I think first we might have one or two questions. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So, okay. yeah, that's right. What we'll do, we'll do one round of, of questions and comments just on, on John's presentation and, and on some of the thinking from IDS. And obviously we're really keen to hear from you, um, you know, uh, your reflections, because I think that really enriches our thinking. Um, but. In addition to, to doing a few minutes of, of questions, what we had wanted to do is give you an opportunity to reflect with others on your table from the first two presentations, and then uh, we're going to uh, set you one task, which is, is to help us in our job and uh, sort of comment on some of the, the pressing questions you see around this agenda. But um, first, can I uh, open the floor for a round of comments or questions on, on what you've heard of John's presentation? There's one here, and then... Hello, my name is Sarah Greenslade, and I work for IMA International, a training consultancy company. Um, I suppose I had some preconceived ideas as to <laughs> what the event might, might discuss, and I was thinking a bit about business and how it interacts in development. And I suppose one thought I had was, well... Business needs to just get on with the business of its business in order to generate employment. And that's the ultimate aim, really, isn't it? We all want work and everyone can lift themselves out of poverty themselves. Um, and I just, yeah, just throw that into the mix, really. Great. Thanks. All right, Christoph Walter, there seems to be lots of consultants in the room. I'm another one. Um, <laughs> uh, I was uh, curious about your remark, John, um, that, that um, there is a great need for 
um, using resources, scarce resources, much more effectively, and, and anything from, from finance to attention of businesses and their willingness to actually look at issues, and I think uh, people who've been in business relate to that very much. Um, I was just curious how on earth that would happen in an NGO and, and public sector uh, uh, driven industry or area and, and how, if you have any, any solutions, any ideas of how such coordination uh, of, of using scarce resources more effectively and better uh, might happen. Um, in, in development. So just, just to clarify, Christopher, you're talking about co um, coordination between NGOs or, or state and, and business to, to use resources more effectively? Yes, okay. so I think uh, the, the development sector uh, in its approach to business, if, if you can kind of compartmentalise these two worlds, but, but then also together, so you know, what's, what's the way of, because business as such is not a monolithic block either and there's a lot of competition. Absolutely, okay. great. Uh, is there... Do one more question just here in the middle. Um, hi, my name's Alison Griffith um, from an NGO called Practical Action. Um, it's, it's a comment really um, and it was uh, to say um, thank you John for mentioning um, systems change uh, with the the focus of the event being largely on business and how business objectives and development objectives align. It's great that you've put that within the context of system change and uh, I wanted to flag that there's a, a group of development practitioners who are working on this subject and looking at how as development actors we can uh, better facilitate system change and the private and public actors within those systems that are crucial to those living in poverty. So there's a, a very dynamic group um, who are working on those, those topics and it um, be great to link with you on that. Great, thanks. That's a, a great suggestion and uh, maybe there'll be some further thoughts on that in, in your table discussion, but I'll, I'll turn it over to John. Okay, um, thanks for those questions. Um, I'll deal with them in the order that they were raised. Um, so the first question was, well, why doesn't business just get on with doing what it does, which is create employment and incomes? And, uh, and I think the answer to that question is, yes, it should. And I think one of the things that business and development wants to do is to think about the innovations and the, the changes in market context that allows businesses to get on with doing that core activity as, as well as they can. And that's certainly, for example, the message that one got from the Secretary of State's intervention at the London Stock Exchange a couple of weeks ago. But I think there are at least two further things that uh, we might want business to do or not do. Um, and, and they are, first of all, what you might call the do less harm agenda. That there are businesses working in market situations where there are externalities. That's to say that businesses do things that impact on people outside of their business for which they don't have to pay the costs. The costs are external to the business. So you get bad effects or, or non-optimal effects. Well, cuts in social total welfare that are not... Uh, uh, then do not weigh upon the business itself. So we want to do something about reducing the harm that business causes, which is made possible by the fact that that harm is an externality to the business and it doesn't pay the price. And that's the, and in a sense, we know that businesses are very, very interested in doing that as well. Otherwise, we wouldn't have businesses paying so much, uh, putting so much uh, many resources into things like um, uh, the development of standards and um, you know, the uh, principles of, of behaviour. So this is not just a development agenda, this is also a business agenda about a level playing field, about making sure, as, uh, again, as uh, Shankar was saying, one of the problems is if you do something and your competitors don't, then you may be at a disadvantage. Well, standards is you know, one way of generalising the, the, the obligation. So we want businesses to do less harm, and I think that is also a business agenda. But we also want businesses to do more good. So, for example, if we say on the nutrition side that businesses can, you know, they're food companies and they're producing a lot of food, we say, well, yeah, but there is this big development problem that, you know, children between the ages of zero and two suffer from massive lifelong changing uh, consequences of malnutrition. Can businesses do something to help us there? And it may be that that's not a really simple thing to do. You know, in terms of targeting, in terms of the um, 
the, the problems of um, um, selling products that are very difficult for consumers to uh, to evaluate and understand, um, uh, where consumers may have low um, nutritional uh, awareness and information. You know, in those situations, it's very expensive for businesses. There are lots of obstacles, and therefore it becomes very costly for businesses to overcome those obstacles. But we have to be thinking about how to uh, how we can incentivize or work with businesses to make effective contrib contributions in those areas. And that may well be through, for example, public private partnerships where some of the biggest challenges are, are solved through uh, state activity and, and uh, public activity and but the, the private sector has eight roles to play within that area and finally just on um, systems change yes I think we are very interested in systems change it's fairly central to the way that we we wrote our initial paper on how we view business and development and one way of thinking about the need for systems change is to say that all businesses are situated within a business ecosystem. They rely on suppliers, they rely on markets, they rely on um, the policy framework which shapes the business ecosystem. So many fundamental things that affect the, the profitability of business, and in some cases whether businesses continue to exist at all, are the consequences of this business environment and the business ecosystem. And if we want businesses to thrive, or we want businesses to make certain particular types of contributions to uh, the achievement of development objectives, then we have to understand the interaction between those businesses and the business ecosystem within which they operate. And so I think that you know, when we're thinking about systems, uh, we can think about you know, systems in different ways. I think that businesses themselves are complex organisations with certain homeostatic tendencies. Um, you know, so difficult to change themselves. Um, but so, but I think so. I think we can sort of think about these systems thinking and the need for system, uh, system change at a number of different levels relevant to the business and development agenda. Thank you. Ah, sorry, I didn't. I skipped from the first question to the third. Let me briefly say. Yes, so it's a good question. Um, we, want, we want people to focus. How do we do it? I think there are two stages in this. Um, firstly, I think we have to identify the areas that are of most benefit, where we get the biggest effect. And uh, we, we're going to be <coughs> working with an idea taken from growth economics around binding constraints as a way of identifying those constraints which, if removed, would have the biggest uh, positive impact. Now, that merely tells us that it would be nice if people focused. How do we get them to focus? Well, I don't think we're going to achieve that overnight. I think that's one of our long-term goals. Um, <coughs> but I think one thing we might want to do is to work with particular agencies and ask those agencies whether they themselves, rather than think development as a whole, whether they themselves can focus their activities more effectively. When I read the 2011 DFID paper on private sector development and, and counted 40 different initiatives that were in the document, around 40 anyway, quite a, quite a large number, uh, of all possible imaginable different types. And I think you know, one might want to say, well, you know, can we focus those down? Can we decide which of those initiatives are really central? Which of those initiatives should we be focusing on? And which are quite nice, but not necessarily a priority. So maybe the first step is to say, can we, at the individual agency level, become more focused? And then think about where we move uh, after that. Thank you.